I'd like to read a couple of poems, one by Robert Burns, one by myself, and they both concern daisies. Now, Burns is sometimes held up as being the, the first nature poet that we have, and um, indeed his, his poem to the daisy, like his more famous poem to a moose, actually speak to those creatures. And that's the beginning of an eco-poetry, I think. He tends to, to then, having spoken to the, the flower or to the mouse or to whatever, turns that as an analogy for his own condition. A modern eco-poet wouldn't do that. They would just leave the mouse or the flower alone in their own thing. So you may see the difference between these two poems. The first by Burns, a mountain daisy, on turning one down with a plough in April 1786. We modest crimson tippet fleur, thou hast met me in an evil hour, for I am crush among the stoor thy slender stem. To spare thee now is past my power, thou bonny gem. Alas, it's no thy neighbour sweet, the bonny lark, companion meet, bending thee mang the dewy wheat with speckled breast, when upward springing blithe to greet the purple in east. Cold blew the bitter biting north upon thy early humble birth, yet cheerfully thou glinted forth amid the storm, scarce reared above the parent earth thy tender form. The flaunting flowers your gardens yield, high sheltering woods and was mun shield, but thou, beneath the random build of clod or stain, adorns the histy stibble field, unseen, alone. There in thy scanty mantle clad, thy snowy bosom sunward spread, thou lifts thy unassuming head in humble guise, but now the shear uptears thy bed, and lo, thou lies. Such is the fate of artless maid, sweet floret of the rural shade, by love's simplicity betrayed and guileless trust, till she, like thee, all soiled, is laid low the dust. Such is the fate of simple bard, on life's rough ocean luckless starred, unskilful he to note the card of prudent lore, till billows rage and gales blow hard and whirl him o'er. Such fate to suffering worth is given, who long with wants and woes has striven, by human pride or cunning driven to misery's brink, till wretched of every stay but heaven he ruined sink. Even thou who mourns the daisy's fate, that fate is thine, no distant date. Stern ruin's ploughshare drives the late full on thy bloom, till crushed between the furrow's weight shall be thy doom. It's a terrible sentiment for a young man with 27 to be expressing, isn't it? He had only 10 years yet to live. Maybe it was a foreshadowing he was experiencing there. Burns speaks to the flower. In my poem, Daisies, um, the flower herself is speaking, or themselves are speaking. I'm fascinated by this, this business of speaking to and speaking as, and I think poetry is the only art form that can actually do that. Speak as another creature. And... Um, as our environmental problems build, we need to advocate for other creatures. So I think poetry has got a very great role to play in that. Daisies. We are flowers of the common sward, that much we understand. Of everything else, we're innocent. No creator laid down such terms for our pleasant lives. It's just our nature. Were we not so? We wouldn't be daisies, closing our lashes at the first suggestion of Venus. By then we're near exhausted. Evening means sleep, and surely it's better to renew ourselves than die of all that openness. But die we will, innocent or no, of how night spills above our garden, a twin glittering there for each of us. Die, never knowing what we miss. Thank you.